Coming up in this video is a snippet from the next story in the Smooth Operator Masterclass series. It's about a child entrepreneur named Albert Ando. Enjoy. Welcome back. We've completed the first lesson on building business infrastructure. At this point, you've heard the story of Emily Miller, her fast-growing nonprofit, and how she used a business parts analysis to position the organization for sustainable scale. You've also learned how to create one for your own organization, as well as the associated benefits and how it results in a defined structure, hiring strategy, and job descriptions to support future growth. If you haven't listened to those episodes, then make sure you do because they contain information that sets the foundation for the lessons you'll learn in the remaining episodes this season. Now it's time to meet our next entrepreneur, or should I say kidpreneur? His name is Albert, and he's about to find out how an organizational chart can prove capacity and scalability. This is episode 184, Child's Play, the story of Albert Ando and the emerging tech startup. Albert Ando has a golden opportunity to take his young software development company to the next level. Investors are currently courting him to help make that possible. His company's growth is steady, and it's predicted to skyrocket once he appears at a popular technology conference. With all his success, there's just one problem. He's still in high school. The investors are concerned about his age. They need assurance that one, they're not placing over a half million dollars into the hands of a child. Two, there's a sustainable growth plan in place. And three, experienced, capable adults are running the company. A chance encounter at the conference leads him to working with a consultant who introduces him to another element of building business infrastructure, the business design blueprint. It was 11.15 a.m. Not even drawn shades could prevent the sun's rays from beaming throughout the classroom. The stillness in the room was only broken occasionally with the sounds of birds tweeting. A welcomed reminder that in two more weeks, spring would officially arrive. The proctor almost lost herself in daydreaming. She was already thinking about her plans for the weekend. For the past three hours, she sat in the back of the classroom performing these periodic room scans, searching for potential cheating or other nefarious activities. The students were sitting in desks lined up in four rows, all facing the front of the classroom. As she continued scanning, her eagle eyes noticed something different. Normally, she saw a sea of 19 students looking at white computer screens with black font. But one of the computers now had a black screen with white font. Admittedly, she was still adjusting to the idea of computerized, standardized tests. However, she knew she needed to investigate this black screened computer. The proctor stood up slowly so as not to draw attention to herself. And like a lioness sneaking up on her prey, she approached the student facing the black screen from behind. She realized right away that this student was not taking the standardized test at all. He was typing what appeared to be gibberish, a strange sequencing of numbers, letters, and symbols. Careful not to cause a scene, she whispered in the student's ear, Young man, just what do you think you are doing? Startled, the student froze and stared at his screen, wide-eyed. He quickly saved his information onto his USB drive and turned, almost in slow motion, to face the proctor. Uh, nothing really. I'm just, uh... Some of the other students looked up from their computers and started snickering. They knew exactly what he was doing. In fact, everyone seemed to be in on this except the proctor. But the proctor was not amused. Young man, you are here to take a very important standardized test. This test will help determine how well this school is teaching, not to mention whether or not you are college material. The student's snickering turned into full-out discernible laughter. The proctor was furious. She stood up straight and walked to the front of the classroom. Excuse me, you may not realize it now, but this is the beginning of your future. She knew she needed to restore order quickly. She walked over to the startled student again and asked him to follow her to the back of the classroom near the desk where she sat. She maintained her composure as well as her hushed tone. What's your name? 
Albert? Albert what? Albert Ando? Well, Mr. Ando, we're taking a trip to the principal's office. Need I remind you that you are in the top high school in the state of Texas. You should take this test seriously. Ma'am, if I may? What? What? If you may, what? The proctor's voice now oscillated between a whisper and a normal tone. She realized that she had indeed caused a scene and did the very thing she hoped would not happen. By raising her voice with Albert, she disrupted the exam process, and now all eyes were on the two of them. Ma'am, I actually finished the test about an hour ago. Are you being sarcastic with me, young man? No, ma'am. I really did finish it. Here, look at the confirmation screen. Albert walked over to his desk and the proctor followed. He reduced the size of the black screen he was working on to show her the date and timestamp screen from the test. He had indeed finished the exam. For a split second, the proctor almost forgot that she was a substitute. She needed to remain poised or else she'd never be asked to sub again. Why didn't you say something? What on earth were you doing anyway? I was writing some last minute code for my demo. I'm preparing for the big South by Southwest conference this weekend. I'm one of the presenters. The proctor's scornful look began to soften. Unbeknownst to her, she had just reprimanded one of the top students in the junior class. She didn't know whether to be angry or amazed. She knew that the South by Southwest conference was a large global conference that brought together people representing a variety of industries, including technology, film, and music. Well, I, I... I I'm, I'm sorry if I appear to be rude. I just thought of some more code for an app I plan to demonstrate at this conference. Still bewildered, the proctor looked Albert up and down. He was polite and well-groomed. And as he spoke, she realized he no longer fit her initial stereotype. She had thought he was an ungrateful teenager. However, his humility threw her off course. Well, we have about 30 minutes left. Go back to your desk, but please keep it quiet. Oh, yes, ma'am. Not a problem. Thank you so much. I'm still going to mention this to your teacher and the principal. Yes, I, I understand. Albert had been through this before. The son of Ghanaian parents, he knew the importance of respecting his elders and sometimes struggled to reconcile his West African upbringing with American culture. The school bell rang, coinciding with the final hour of the standardized test. As the students powered down the computers at their respective desks and walked out of the classroom, the proctor wished each of them well. She noticed Albert walking toward her. When the classroom was cleared of all students, she motioned for him to walk alongside her. When they arrived at the principal's office, the proctor learned of Albert's fame as a rising star and prodigy at the school. What was supposed to be a scolding transformed into an apology from the proctor. She even asked if Albert could email her a link to his recorded demo at the South by Southwest conference. With just two days left before the conference, Albert still had much work to do. As soon as he got home from school that day, he rushed to his bedroom, locked the door, and buried himself into his world of coding. At 16 years old, he not only excelled in academics, but in business as well, or so he thought. In fact, he already had investors waiting to infuse additional capital into his business to support its fast growth and help take it to the next level. This is why the stakes were so high. Not only would those investors be at the South by Southwest conference, but there would be other potential investors and business partners there too. Up to this point, he generated business primarily by word of mouth. He predicted this would all change after the conference. Specifically, the investors were prepared to invest 600,000 US dollars over a three year period for 10% ownership in Albert's company. That was based on a current valuation of 1.5 million US dollars, which was double the revenue last year. Albert's company turned a profit since its inception, with its only marketing being word of mouth. Therefore, the investors had no doubt about his company's proof of concept, potential market size, or proposed customer acquisition strategy. 
Their biggest concern was, and frankly always had been, Albert's ability to manage the business while still in high school. Though they were aware of Albert's Uncle Salome's contributions, he was thousands of miles away in Ghana. To add to their concern was the fact that Albert's parents also had demanding jobs. For these reasons, they recommended a small business development incubator, a place where Albert could receive the face-to-face support needed to grow his business responsibly. By the time his mother arrived home from work, she had already heard what happened to Albert earlier that day at school. She ignored the please do not disturb sign hanging around his bedroom doorknob and swung the door open. He lifted his head from his computer just long enough to answer his mother's barrage of questions, assuring her that everything was fine. His mother could see he was busy putting the finishing touches on the demo portion of his presentation. She asked that he take a break and join she and his father for dinner. Perfect timing, he thought. He felt a sigh of relief as he saved the final version of his presentation. He went to bed that night confident that tomorrow would be a game changer. The next day, his mother drove the two of them from Dallas to Austin, Texas. His father planned to catch a short flight to meet up with them later. It was now the day of the conference, and Albert and Mrs. Ando arrived early. Each wore a bright orange long sleeve shirt with his company's logo and website address on the back. They figured they could serve as walking billboards while at the conference. At 12.30 p.m., they cut their attendance at the keynote speaker's presentation short to allow themselves time to go to the room where his presentation would take place. Once there, he began setting up. Like clockwork, at exactly 1 p.m., the conference facilitator introduced him. Albert walked onto the stage. There he noticed his mother sitting proudly in the front row. Her wide smile was all he needed to assure him that everything would go well. It's showtime, he thought. He proceeded to give his presentation just as he had practiced countless times. Toward the end, he displayed a thank you slide and graciously concluded his presentation. As he exited the stage, he noticed the crowd giving him a standing ovation. He looked up and noticed his mother's eyes glistening. He hated to see her cry, but he knew they were tears of joy. By the time Albert exited the stage, Mrs. Ando was already there to greet him. She gave him a big hug and kissed him on the cheek, telling him how proud she was of him and suggesting they get something to eat. Albert's stomach was beginning to tie into knots. What started as butterflies developed into full-blown stomach pains by the time he finished his presentation. They walked to one of the many cafe areas. Along the way, they were pleasantly bombarded with compliments. Many people stopped Albert to shake his hand, congratulate him, and hand him their business cards. Wanting to make the most out of the conference, Albert gulped down his food despite his mother's repeated requests that he slow down and make sure he chewed before he swallowed. Then they went to attend another presentation. While Albert walked toward the center of the room to grab a seat, Mrs. Ando stayed outside of the room to make a quick phone call to her husband. Oh, honey, you would be so proud. Our son did it. He even received a standing ovation. As she continued gloating about Albert, she noticed a young woman walking toward her. She paid the woman no mind until she realized that the woman was waiting to speak with her. Honey, I better go. I think there's someone waiting to talk to me. We'll see you at the hotel. I love you. Mrs. Ando put her cell phone into her purse as the young woman walked closer toward her. Hello. That was quite a show that young man put on. Are you his? I am his mother. You must be so proud. Yes, I am. I'm Victoria Villarreal. I couldn't help noticing the thank you slide of Albert's presentation. I'm familiar with the venture capital firm he cited. Many of my clients have worked with them. Really? What do you do? Well, I'm a project manager. I used to work as a software developer, but eventually I decided to do consulting instead. I burned out on coding and decided I still wanted to work in the field, but help other rising stars. It keeps me connected to the development community without the late night coding jamborees and poor dietary habits. Lucky for Albert, he has me as his personal chef to make sure he doesn't gorge on junk food. 
I now do a lot of project management for software development projects. I've done the gamut from design and development to client engagement and account management. It looks like Albert already has a company in place. Yes, that's right. He's officially going into his third year of business. It's really taken off, too, thanks to the incubator he started working with. Incubator? Yes, that was at the suggestion of the venture capital firm. Hmm. I'm surprised they didn't recommend me to you. I have a good relationship with them, and they should know that Albert would be an ideal client for me. I hope you've enjoyed listening to Albert's story. If you want to hear the full story and discover how Victoria helps him prove it's worth investing in his company, then here's two things you can do. First, you can buy my book. It's called Behind the Facade, How to Structure Company Operations for Sustainable Success. Albert's story is featured in chapter three. The other thing that you can do is sign up for the online Smooth Operator Masterclass. There, you'll see video demonstrations that will show you exactly how to create your own business design blueprint and prove once and for all your business's capability to deliver results. Click the link in the description box below to sign up at smoothoperator.courses. See you in the next video.